even though afternoon temperatures are still well into the 70s. In fact, by this next weekend, we're supposed to be up in the 90s again, yikes. But it is time, believe it or not, to prep for fall and winter. You don't know us, I'm Hope, and Larry's behind the camera. Hi. This is Under the Median, where every week we talk about practical frugality. Follow me around the house as I complete some cold weather preps today. We're gonna to start right here in the bedroom. Even though, as I just mentioned, the daytime temperatures are still quite warm, it doesn't take very long for all of a sudden for it to go from sleeveless weather to sweater weather. I really like to have two piles of sweaters. I have like the just moderate weight sweaters where it's just a little bit chilly, and these are the heavyweight sweaters. One of the most important things you wanna do though is make sure that they all still fit, make sure that they're not worn, that there's no holes, because if that does happen, there's still plenty of time to replace them before cold weather sets in. One of the most important ways you can do that is by know the sales cycle at your local thrift stores. For instance, tell me if this is true in your area as well. Our Goodwills in our area have just started what they call $3 Thursdays. The last Thursday of every month, all the clothing in a store is $3. And in fact, another thrift store in our area just had a special sale where one Friday only, all the clothing was $1. Become aware of exactly what is being offered as far as sales in your local thrift stores. One of the best ways to do this, guys, social media. Follow them on Instagram or Facebook and that's where they're going to let you know about the special sales. Here's another sort of cycle to become aware of and that is that right now is when you are going to find the end of summer clearance. Prices will dip 75 to 90 percent off. In fact, I just saw that Kohl's had their special sale last week where it was the sale price plus you had a coupon that was available for an additional 20% off. So be looking for those. The other thing to consider toward the end of the year is, is there were an awful lot of holidays between now and the end of the year. Anytime there's a major holiday, wait seven to 10 days past that major holiday and everything related to that holiday is going to go once again 75 to 90% up. And some of those items that they count as seasonal items or holiday items, Really, they're pretty generic. You can pick them up for almost pennies on the dollar, put them aside in your gift stash and give them for gifts later. When it comes to cold weather items, I have noticed that like the cycle of where they're dropping the prices of that cold weather items, it seems to be a little bit longer than it has been in previous years. For instance, usually things like long underwear, socks, hats, mittens, coats, they start to drop in price by around the middle to end of January. But I found this for a dollar. They were sets of long underwear. You bought the, the tops and the bottoms separately, but each piece was one dollar. I found this at Walmart and I think it was early May when I found it. And in fact, Larry just bought himself a new winter coat. He hasn't had a new winter coat in 20 years. Now it was a little over $100 for the winter coat, but the original price was $400. And this parka, it'll last him another 20 years. Christmas. I know some of you cannot believe I just uttered that word. You need to start thinking about it right now. Now, especially if you're like me, you buy things throughout the year, you got a gift stash sitting around waiting for Christmas to come. Make sure that you have that really well inventory. Here's something that I do. My kids are incredibly adventurous when it comes to food. And I'm able to find items like this on the Markdown General Merchandise shelf at Kroger. Look at this. So this is black truffle oil and white truffle oil. I'll turn it around so you can see what I paid for each of these. Dun, 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 dun. There you go under four bucks for each of them. Now, usually I collect a number of items like this and I set it aside and I make cute little gift baskets, one for each of my married sons and their wives. But here's the big problem with this, these price tags. They sure get your attention in the grocery store, but oh boy, are they hard to get off. Here's my hack for doing that. Grab your blow dryer, plug it in, put this blow dryer on low heat. And then just start at the top of the price tag, go all the way down to the bottom. It takes a little bit of time and effort. But what happens is the glue on the back of this will start to soften. And as soon as it does, you'll be able to start from the top, peel it all the way down and take it off cleanly without even being able to tell that the price tag was even on there. 
Hey, do me a favor. Even if you're one of those people who was truly not ready to hear the word Christmas yet, make sure that you scroll up. Give this video a thumbs up for me. Make sure you subscribe to Under the Median. And if you're also one of those people who is looking to save some cash every single month, if you're consistently looking to spend less and save more, grab our free guide to reducing expenses. I'll make sure there's a link in the description of the video. It's also time to get out one of my very favorite things in the whole wide world, your flannel sheets. We have a set for each bed in this house. This really does allow us, I feel, to like lower that temperature of the furnace, probably another two degrees, at least maybe overnight, because these flannel sheets will keep you super warm. But you wanna go ahead, get them out, launder them, and keep them ready to go on the bed so that that first really chilly night, you're ready to put them on the bed and you're ready to go. And with everything, never pay full price. These flannel sheet sets will go on clearance sometime once again in the spring, where we're looking at maybe into February, March, April. As I mentioned, I was seeing winter clearance things all the way into the first of May this year. So keep an eye out and you should be able to pick these up for about 75% off at the end of the season. Welcome to the kitchen. <laughs> Let's get some end of the season uh, fruits and vegetables all ready for winter storage. I generally either freeze them or I dehydrate them. Zucchini. Now you know, it's your neighbor, the one with the great big garden that is dropping these off on your doorstep late at night when you're asleep. You just wake up and there's zucchini right there ready for you. No, in all seriousness, Zucchini is either incredibly, and I do mean incredibly cheap right now, even at farmer's markets. You can get three of these for $2. I just saw it last week at the farmer's market. Or people are more than willing to share their bounty with you generally at this time of the year. When you get a zucchini, public service announcement, this zucchini has already been washed, just to be clear. Take the end of it off here, save this end, Usually I just stick it into a, uh, into a baggie that I have reserved for making vegetable stock. So any of my trimmings go in that bag and when the bag is full, I make vegetable stock. You can do this a couple of ways, of course. Just slice it and if they're big slices, I just usually go through them once or twice. If they're super big, you can go through them a second time and then I just lay them out in a single layer on a pan, which is you can either use parchment paper or you can use one of these silicone liners. I love these liners. I brought them, bought them probably four or five years ago. They're Amazon Basics. They were under $20 for two liners and I have used and used and used them. They've held up really, really well. You're going to put these in a single layer, freeze them, the silicone liner makes certain that they're not going to stick. Like if you just put them in without the silicone, it would stick to this surface. It will help it to peel right off and then you can put it in freezer bags. Make sure that you label it and date it when you put it in the freezer. You can also use just an old fashioned kitchen grater and I'll grate this into a bowl and then measure out four cup increments, put that in a small freezer bag, stick it in the freezer because then it depends on how you're going to use it, right? If you're going to use it for like zucchini bread, then you want it to make sure that it's great. If you're going to use it for soup, then you want to have it in pieces like this. Here's another thing that is a fall item garlic. My friend Donna just gave me all of this glorious garlic. You can tell I've been in here. I've used half of this uh, head of garlic. She gave me all this garlic. You get a lot of garlic. Don't let it go to waste. Uh, you can peel it, take the individual cloves, and you can chop up the cloves if you want, or if you want them whole, just stick them on a little bit of olive oil, and then you can put them in ice cube trays if you want and put them in the freezer, but they will last for a long time, just submerged in olive oil in your refrigerator as well. Garlic lasts a good long time. Do it on a day where you don't mind like your, your entire like body smelling like garlic when you get done with like, I think there's a dozen heads of garlic there. This isn't necessarily a fall item. This is just a reminder to you that like these grapes, I don't know why my family did not eat them up right away. I just, I maybe it's because we have a lot of fruit in the house right now, but they're starting to get a little bit wilted, a little bit soft. Just take those. Those are another good candidate to just put in a single layer on a baking sheet like this, freeze them, stick them in the freezer. 
They're really nice. Like when you want something a little sweet, just grab frozen grapes and they're good to eat. Squash. Winter squash are going to show up all over the place in the next couple of weeks. Now, this one did not come from the farmer's market, but when we were at the market Saturday, I saw that the first of these squashes starting to come in. Uh, this one came from Kroger. This was in the markdown bin, guys. It's organic. It was 99 cents. No joke. I want to show you this because this is another one of those things. When I get a lot of squash, and believe me, we love squash. So by the end of squash season, my table will be filled with different kinds of squash. I figure out how I want to use it before I prepare it for winter storage. Because if you want cubes, you're going to want to make sure that you cube it. Usually, I just cut it right here. This is the neck of the squash. So this is all squash meat from here up. I cut it here right at the neck. Down here is where all your seeds are. I cut this in half, take all the seeds out. You can save the seeds and you can roast the seeds for later. It's a nice treat. Uh, but then it can go into your Instant Pot. And in eight to 10 minutes, you're gonna cook it in the Instant Pot and then the squash is gonna be perfectly cooked. Now, I, I bought like four of these guys. So because I have so many of them, I may break down and actually use my electric oven. It's kind of expensive to use, so I don't use it very often. But if I do use it, it's going to be completely full here of squash and whatever else I can put in there while I went to all the time, trouble, and effort to turn the oven on and use a little bit of energy money to, to cook some things. So just sort of bear in mind, uh, you want to think about the cost, the overall cost of how you're preparing it. Using those low energy appliances does pay off. But sometimes if like in my case, if I want to do four of them, it might be just as cost effective to turn the oven on for an hour and roast them in the oven. Whoop. <laughs> Couple more examples. We also, we all have these that are, this is the last growing of the growing season. These are starting to get just a little bit soft. I just, take these, wash them off real good, and I put them in a freezer bag and just freeze them whole. You can slice them if you want to. You can also dehydrate them. Dehydrated peppers are actually really sweet, believe it or not. It concentrates all that sweetness in one area, and we really like those. Tomatoes, everybody's getting the last of the tomatoes off the vine. Don't throw away your green tomatoes. My grandmother made green tomato relish every single year at the end of the growing season. If you're going to freeze your tomatoes, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, okay? This tomato's been washed, by the way. Uh, I, um, I don't take the skin off of my tomatoes before I freeze them. I know, for some of you that's just like, what? I do not mind the skins. And since I don't, I just cut them basically into wedges and I put them into a freezer bag and that's all that I do. Now, if you are among the crowd that says, no, no, they, they, you gotta take the skin off. Here's the easiest way to do it. You're gonna take your knife, look at the bottom of the tomato and you are going to make a little, and I'll show you when I get done here. Do you see that X on the bottom of the tomato? That's all you need to do. You're gonna take this tomato and put it in very, very hot water, submerge it for about 60 seconds. And just that much heat is going to release this skin that's on the outside of the tomato. You'll be able to peel it right off before you cut it into wedges and put it in your freezer. Fresh apples. It's definitely apple season. And these are perfectly ripe. This whole tree is really filled this year. We will be picking this tree bare. We'll have an apple picking party where our kids come over, we'll put up a couple of uh, ladders. We'll get it all picked clean. Uh, we'll save some of it. We're just eating like this. Some of it will go into applesauce and I'll, de I'll take rings. I'll make rings out of it and also dehydrate rings of apples as well. The applesauce is great in the middle of winter. Hey, while we're standing in the driveway, <laughs> Uh, you might want to do a couple of things to make sure your car is ready for winter as well. You want to check the air pressure in the tires. We do that probably once a month because that air pressure does change throughout all four seasons. You also want to check the antifreeze and you want to check the tread on your tires and make sure that that tread is good enough to get you through the winter snow. The reason I mention it is this baby has two things. It has a slow leak in one of the tires, which we really have to get looked at. And the front two tires, that tread is not real good. So I think we're gonna have to replace those tires before winter. 
Another thing you wanna become super aware of right now at this time of the year is making sure that your backup supply of power is ready for winter. You don't wanna get caught in the middle of winter and all of a sudden your backup power supply doesn't work. This is our power generator. Larry gets it out and checks it over once a month and starts it up to make sure that it's starting. And it's a good thing that he does because last year when he did this, it would not start and we had to get it in to get it repaired. These are all the tasks that we're doing today to prep for fall, but it's not everything that we do every year in order to get ready for colder weather. We have another video we did exactly a year ago where we showed you all the rest of our frugal fall preps. I'm gonna make sure guys it's listed right over there so you can take a watch next and get some apples, they're really good.